Hey, I don't know if you are familiar with the name Corey Ten Boom, but she is the author of a book called The Hiding Place, and this is a Christian classic. It was published in the 80s, and it is truly a must read. It really helps you navigate life, uh, and especially when it comes to dealing with suffering and pain and anxiety. So Corey and her sister Bessie grew up in Holland uh, during World War II. Their family was hiding Jews. They were eventually captured by the Nazis and they were sent to a concentration camp. And as you can imagine, that was a horrible experience. They were living in barracks that were supposed to house 300 prisoners. They had a thousand prisoners in them, uh, infested with fleas. Uh, these are starvation conditions, diseases everywhere people dropping dead everywhere. It was an incredibly dark experience. The book is a retelling of those days and the lessons she learned, but it's also a, a contrast between her and her sister, Bessie. You know, Bessie was, uh, I'd say she's the consummate optimist and she just had this amazing faith and was able to trust God going through this horrendous trial. And she always felt that her circumstances were her calling. So that was her mission ground. God had ordained that time for them and that she was on mission. And where Corey, on the other hand, what I say was probably more, probably just more of a normal person, more prone to anxiety and constantly worried about the future and what was gonna happen and just why were they going through this? Just the normal, the normal emotions anybody would have. Early on in her life, her father had said to her that some burdens were too heavy to bear, but that he would bear them for her. But Corey found herself in this camp and it was an experience that was far too much to bear. And yet her father was gone and this was a burden that was far too much for her to bear. So over time, Bessie became weaker and weaker and Corey was beside herself. This was her best friend, her closest confidant. Uh, and her really her greatest tie to the world. And uh, Bessie eventually died. Two weeks later, Corey is released. She is released on a clerical error. She was supposed to go to the gas chamber and yet God uh, spared her and by mistake she's released. And yet she's now free, but her life is in ashes. There's just nothing left from her perspective. She couldn't see it at the time, but later she would look back and she could see that God had uniquely ordained that time. That suffering she went through was there to transform her. Pain was her professor. It was to teach her and get her to a place she could never get to on her own. And that suffering was a door, and it was the door to get her to her next life, which she couldn't see at the time. That's always the problem, right? So she's going through this horrible experience and yet God had a destiny for her. And she was to become his megaphone to the world and to shout his message to the world that there's no pit too deep for his love to reach and that he will always be there no matter what the circumstances, he's there for us. Um, and that she would later go on to shout to the world and to be used in an amazing, amazing way. We're gonna cover that next week. We're gonna unpack more of her book and, and kind of look through the lessons that she learned. So stay tuned and God bless you. Thank you for caring for your persecuted brother and sister.